Hi everybody and welcome to this week's LEGO Technic video. Uh, over the last few weeks I've been presenting various multi-function gearboxes and what I mean by multi-function is that generally speaking they've just got the one motor but they implement more than one function that you can select remotely. So in this case I presented this gearbox probably a few weeks ago now and it implements four different speeds. Um, so it's got three forward speeds and one reverse speed and you can select those different speeds again like I said with uh, your one remote and using the one motor. Another example is last week I presented this gearbox, uh, this one again same kind of theme we've got two outputs in this case and each output can be individually selected and individually driven and not only forwards but also backwards so you can select between each one forwards or backwards and again it's just using a single motor and a single remote control. So I've continued that theme this week, uh, this time I've built a tank and again this tank has got the single motor, the single uh, remote control channel and it implements driving both forwards, backwards, turning left and turning right just again using this just the, uh, the one motor and a uh, remote control selection system. Okay so how can you get a motor to implement multiple functions? Uh, well the trick is to realize of course that a motor can go in more than one direction and by having a mechanism like this what I've got here is a yellow axle that you drive and that connects through a 16 tooth gear to another 16 tooth gear and that is on this loose lift arm. What happens if you rotate the input for example in the clockwise direction it will drive that lift arm to the left and make that uh, gear connect to the left output and again if we rotate in the opposite direction it will do the opposite and connect to the right output. So what that allows us to do is select between two different outputs depending on the direction of the motor. Uh, I've got this uh, small piece of rubber there, uh, one of the LEGO Technic pieces that allows this mechanism to work sort of in any kind of direction relative to gravity so um, that little gear actually connects onto the rubber piece and pushes off that to connect uh, to the top one independent of the direction of the gravity. So that works quite well um, and then what I do I use the forward direction to drive the output and I use the reverse direction as an, a uh, function selector. So what I do I connect that um, right output to a function selector mechanism so for example this one here what I've got is a knob wheel that knob wheel is sort of been connected to a stepper function that only allows 90 degree steps and by having this kind of stepper like that I can have a rotary catch that can go into four different 90 degree positions and allow me to implement four different functions depending on how I connect that uh, rotary catch to various switching mechanisms Okay, so in the case of the first gearbox, I've got the rotary catcher selecting between four different speeds. So in this case, I've implemented a 1 to 3 on the right, a 1 to 1 in the middle, a 3 to 5, and a reverse speed on the left. And like I said, that gives us four different combinations corresponding to the four different positions of the rotary catchers. Uh, same with the uh, second gearbox. Again, it's pretty much got four combinations. It's got the rotary catch in the middle there that's selecting between the two outputs on the left here. So you can select um, either driving the top output or the bottom output and you can select it to drive either forwards or backwards so again because it's four combinations two outputs times two directions in the case of a tank it's kind of similar to this gearbox you've got two outputs you've got uh, each of the tracks that you're going to be driving however the difference is in the case of a tank or a tracked vehicle you want uh, pretty much want both of the tracks to be going at the same time in four different combinations so for example if you've got uh, a simple tracked vehicle like this uh, you've got your two tracks which correspond to your two outputs from your motor uh, and when you want to go forward you want both of them to be going forwards when you want to drive backwards you want both to be going backwards if you want to turn left then you need for example the left one to be turning backwards and the right one to be going forwards so that way you'll be turning to the left if you want to turn to the right you need the right one to go backwards and the left one to go forwards so again it gives us the four different combinations we've got the both forward both back both going in opposite directions in two different ways four combinations so the challenge is, is how, to, how do you configure those rotary catches and your switches to be able to drive the two outputs uh, in those four different combinations and that was quite a hard challenge for me okay so the challenge was to find the combination of a rotary catch switches and gears that would implement those four different tracked combinations now after a bit of playing around I came up with this particular configuration and what this one implements is the uh, steering mechanism so um, I'll just demonstrate how this works so I've got the input at the bottom here we've got the uh, left output track and the right output track represented by those two axles there 
when I rotate the input you can see that the two outputs are going in opposite directions. So in this case if I'm rotating the input uh, forwards then the left track goes forwards and the right track is going backwards and then when I switch the rotary switch in the opposite direction then the two reverse. So now we've got the right track going forwards and the left track going backwards. Uh, so just some details on this implementation. So we've got that uh, driving axle coming through here. We've got that selected, either selecting this left one and that one or this one and that one to drive the two outputs. And I've got the requirement that this axle and that axle have to be going in opposite directions for this to work correctly. In this particular example I've implemented the uh, reversing of those axles by using a 28 tooth gear driving in 36. Of course the problem with that is, is that uh, these uh, will be going at uh, different speeds or relative speeds to each other. Kind of need to be uh, 1 to 1 rather than 28 to 36. Uh, so one way of solving that that I ended up implementing was to use a different reversing uh, mechanism uh, or gearing mechanism that's in this particular configuration here. So uh, we've got this gear driving that one, then that one driving the um, 20 tooth gear and then dri drives back onto the 16 by having those four gears in series like that. We end up having that reverse, one-to-one uh, -one reverse between this gear and that one. Uh, so again, we've got the same uh, mechanism working, um, and uh, we can rotate that round and drive two combinations. So this allows me to create uh, the two uh, steering combinations. Now I also needed the other two combinations, which was forwards and reverse. Uh, now I played around with this quite a bit, and it was actually you know, quite hard for me to, to be able to build that. Uh, but after looking at this for a while, I thought, well, hang on, if I just reverse one of these uh, somehow by having another driving mechanism uh, onto this gear, then, you know, when this one's going backwards, and then I've got that one reversed onto another axle, then that one would be going backwards as well. So the idea I ended up coming up with is to, to put two of these on top of each other like this, uh, and then have the bottom one generate the uh, two turning gears and then the top one generate the forward and reverse and by driving that top one onto this gear by using this reversing mechanism it's kind of got the same distance between them we can put kind of uh, a mechanism like this in between to generate that uh, reversing mechanism what that means if I can drive that one in reverse onto this axle and this one just uh, normal without the reverse but that means that the top mechanism will generate the forward and reverse directions and the bottom mechanism will generate the two uh, steering mechanism and then it's just a matter of connecting the two rotary uh, catches together uh, and have them at 90 degree angles so that when uh, the top one is engaged the bottom one uh, or if the top one's engaged and the bottom one will be disengaged and vice versa when the top one is engaged the bottom will be uh, disengaged so that way that allows me to implement uh, all the four different combinations that are required for the tank mechanism Okay, I hope all that made sense. I'll just show you how it's actually been implemented in the tank itself. So underneath here we can see the orange rotary catch. We've got two layers, one at the bottom, one at the top. The orange rotary catches are driving the switches, which are driving the gears, and those gears then drive onto each of the tracks through a 1 to 9 gearing ratio. So here at the top and one at the bottom, driving each of the tracks independently. Here on the right you can see that uh, gear reversing mechanism between the top axle and the bottom axle to be able to create that forward and backward uh, track directions and then once that's been implemented it just came down to implementing the um, function selection within the motor itself so if the motor is going backwards we're uh, selecting between the different uh, track combinations and forwards we're driving the tank so it's been built into here at the top of the tank you can see that red lift arm that's the one that moves up and down for the selection then after that that then drives that uh, knob wheel mechanism in order to uh, make the, uh, the stepper 90 degree steps to select the four different functions so as that rotates it'll select different functions and I've got an indicator at the top here that indicates which function has been selected so if that's pointing forwards the tank will drive forwards if you point it to the right it'll turn right backwards it'll drive backwards and obviously the finally the left will turn to the left Okay, it must be time to show the tank in action, so I'll just lift it up and show from underneath first. Uh, I've got my remote controller here, the battery box is turned on. When I put the remote in reverse, you can see the tank selector uh, rotating. So that's just selecting one of the four different track functions. If I uh, just stop it in this position and then put the joystick forward, you can now see the tank will start driving forwards. Both tracks are going in the forward direction. I can then switch like this, and now the tank tracks are going opposite directions, it'll be turning 
uh, probably let's see to the right uh, again we can go backwards and now change the reverse direction both tracks are going in reverse and finally switch to the last combination and the tracks are going in, in reverse but in the other direction to the four and now again we're going forwards so that is how the track selection uh, mechanism works let's put it down uh, you can see the indicator there is uh, sitting backwards at the moment so we will change that to the forward function and we'll drive forward and off we go I will now change and rotate to the right so now the tank is rotating to the right we can now switch to forward again and drive off forward switch to the right and turn right and now we'll switch to backwards and drive backwards okay so that is the remote controlled single motor tank Okay, so that was the single motor remote control tank. Now you would have noticed it did struggle a little bit in terms of that driving and turning. Of course, with all the gearing that's been needed to implement all those different functions with the single motor, it does put a lot of strain and friction on the output mechanism. However, it did work. I would consider this a success, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.